G'day yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Thursday, February the 10th, 2022, and this is video number 141. How are you all doing? I hope you're well and that you're enjoying your February. I looked on the calendar, the last time that I posted anything about my works in progress was probably around two weeks ago, so I want to update you on what's been going on with my works. I've got some in progress and I've got a finished item. I also want to uh, catch you up on the Hobie review yarn, which arrived and I've been diligently working on that. So I've got a little bit of a discussion to share about what's happening there. And I also have some updates on the community, my ongoings, and I hope that you'll enjoy sticking around and watching that as well. For anyone who's new to the channel, I want to say hi, I'm Gary, and I set this channel up to talk about all of my yarny adventures. That's in knit crochet. I do double in a little bit of yarn dyeing, but I haven't done so yet in this new location that I've moved to. And I'm waiting for the weather to warm up. I have a garage so I can get in there and do some dyeing and look for that later in the summer or autumn of this year. And I don't do it on a big scale, I just do it for fun and I share my yarn with people in the yarn community as well as friends and I work with some of it as well. So if that kind of thing is of interest, please stick around. And to my fibre friends who are returning, I want to say thank you so much for all the wonderful comments in the last video where I unveiled or revealed my mystery yarn that I got from Knit Crate and the deal is still on out there. I just checked as of yesterday, I think, that uh, Knit Crate still has the $39.99 US dollar yarn deals for six hanks and they'll ship it to you from their website. So yeah, not affiliated, just loved the yarn and a lot of you had the same yarn as I did or different yarn and you're sharing comments with me about things that you've made with it or intend to make with it so absolutely love the feedback and the connection here that we're making on YouTube so without further ado let's look at some of the things that I've got for you today so we'll jump into the podcast by talking about my one and only finished item and I'm super, super happy about this. It came off my needles about two weeks ago and I've been wearing it whenever the weather allows and permits and it is quite warm garment. It is my cable vest. Now I did showcase it in a couple of videos back and it was about half done. So excited. This has a bit of a history to it which I want to include because it's been swimming around in my brain for about two years. I have my notebook with all of the numbers and crunched all of the different styles of cables that I liked and how many rows in the cables before the twisting and the neckline, how many uh, stripes I wanted and all that sort of fun design stuff. And I tried it out way back when, I'm going to say maybe two years ago in economic yarn and I did lots of things to this garment. The poor garment went through a uh, like an over dyeing technique that I have in the kitchen. And I really kind of like put it through the ringer. But it ended up being an oversized tent on me. And I do keep it still because I referred back to it when I made the second attempt at the sweater vest. And I was looking at when to separate for the arms, how how many um, cables in did I want to kind of like make the arm line so it would fit nicely around my, sh my shoulders and not hang over too much and how much of a neck dip I, that I wanted. So the prototype was essential for me looking back to make this one. So here it is here. What do you think? I absolutely love it. I've been wearing it so it's probably a little wrinkly and I love the the pull in from the sleeve line to the armpit and I like the depth of the of the neckline as well. I like the ribbing, I like the striping as well. All of these things were kind of like helpful to have the prototype where I could improve on. So it is a little longer, enough for me to have it go maybe two or three inches past my belt line. So I'm not always tugging on the hem to uh, keep my back warm. And if I sit down, it's not going to creep up and show like, you know, half of my shirt hanging out. So yeah, really, really like it. What did I use? Let's take a look. 
I the majority of the yarn in here is the from Noro Kiri, the collection called K I R I, and this color here is called number twenty two, commonly referred to sometimes as teal night. Absolutely love this. So I received this yarn from Crystal over at Bag of Day, and I love it. Love this yarn so much. Thank you, Crystal. And I used two and a half hanks. They came in 100 grams. I'll show you the label. So that's the, the main one. I don't know whether it's going to focus because I don't have a fancy camera, but that's the information here. And what I did was I didn't just use that yarn on its own. I paired it with two overdyed yarns that I cooked up in the kitchen. And this one here being more of a warmer, warmer green and this one being more of a tealy green color. So I forced a gradation when I worked it up from the bottom up and I started with uh, holding this green with the main color and then about three or four inches of interchanging or alternating between the teal and the warm green as I work through the body. And then finally, where it comes to where I separated for the arms moving up to the shoulder line, I just used the teal color. So I forced a bit of a gradient uh, along the length of the, of the garment. So I don't know whether it's very subtle, but the top part here is more of a teal and the bottom part here is more of the, of the emeraldy green. Yeah. And the yarn that I used was from Kartopu that I over dyed and it uh, is in their series that they have called Natural Angora or Angora Natural. So it is quite a warm garment with all of the fuzz from the mohair on the Angora yarn. The striping was done in a little mini hank that I had and this was purchased from Knit Picks in a set of five mini hanks called Springfield but I believe you can buy a full hank of this if you like the color it's called Pearlescent or Pearlescence and it is in the Knit Picks Stroll collection. Really, really nice and soft. And the yarn when it washed up was expanded a lot. So I, with my gauging, I kind of accounted for the fact that uh, it, would, it would actually stretch. I knitted it up to fit with no ease. When I washed it and uh, pinned it, it grew three inches extra. So I had, I have now an inch and a half of positive ease around the, um, the width of my body, which is lovely. And so it hangs really nice and it drapes very nicely as well too. So I have some photos of me clowning around in it when I was in the chill room. So I'll add them in now and I'll try it on because it is quite warm in the room right now, but I'll try it on for a little bit and I might have to take it off. So I'll see you after the photos are finished. Okay, that was me just having too much time on my hands, taking photographs and uh, on this lovely rug that we have purchased for the spare room. I absolutely love that rug too. The pattern in it is just amazing. So what did I use for my knitting needles? I used a three, a three millimeter Lackey, Licky, I think it's L-Y-K-K-E, and it's in their Driftwood collection. The length of it was 40 inches around. So it did quite stretch around the circumference of this knitting needle. When the, when the ribbing was done, I moved then over to a four millimeter to do the cable work on my Chagu bamboos. And these are all fixed needles until I get to 
the neck and the holes of the sleeves. I moved then into my interchangeable chagu and that was in the stainless steel um, interchangeables that I have. And I went back down to a three millimeter. So the project had three different knitting needle sizes and different knitting needle types, but they all worked well with, with one another. And I really liked the, the finished item. Next up is works in progress. Now this crocheted blanket I've showcased before, but I've put a num number of rows more onto it. I want to show you the progress of it. So it is crocheted in the rice stitch. Now I'll lift up the part where I was last time. I was up to the red where it just before it turned into this gray bar and I'd worked up all of the green section and showcased it up to this point. So the new part is this gray bar, then this light gray pastel -y color, and then all of this gray bar here, and then into this new yarn combo that I've got. So I'm holding two yarns together. What I'm using is loops and threads, Eco Waves Multi or Eco Waves Solid. And this is what the label looks like. I don't know whether Michael's sells this anymore in store. It was around last summer and it's kind of like a homespun yarn where it boucles. I don't know whether that's called boucle, but it sort of goes to a very fine two weight all the way up to a, I'm going to say five with that fuzzy. So what I've found is when I'm using this yarn on its own, because I did a little test before, is that it's very difficult to frog. So what I've gone and done is I've paired it with a sock or sport weight variegated yarn to add a little bit more texture. And when I need to frog it back, if I need to go back to a mistake to correct it, it's going to frog a lot easier. And I've done that I've done that several times in the blanket. So the saving grace to add another consistent yarn to it, like a sock or a sport weight yarn, uh, has saved me when I've needed to frog back on the project. So going back to here, I've already spoken about the yarn up to the red part. So I'm my idea is to separate all the color bars with a bar of gray. And I'm using the Caron cloud cake in the colorway graphite and I'm holding together again another sock weight just to keep it consistent with the speckling throughout the project. This one is the Loops and Threads Eco uh, Waves and it is the multi variety called Light Grey Pastel and I'm holding that with different variations of sock weight and sport weight yarn and again my stripe here and I'm into the next ball of the Loops and Threads Eco Waves Multi. And this one is called Black White. And I'm holding with it a Yarn Art yarn. I'll just show you those two. So this is the... These two yarns. This is the Loops and Threads Eco waves multi in black white and this one here that I'm holding it with right now currently is called Pacific uh, yarn art in the Pacific collection and the colorway is 309 so those two together working up very very nicely I absolutely love this project and it's going to be a weighted blanket it's very very heavy and I have two more balls after I finish this one I have the blue one that I just showed you that I'll be using. And I also have the uh, another one, it's kind of red and white together. So that will all be going into the blanket. So I'm really enjoying this make. The next item that I'm gonna show you is a work in progress, a new cast on for me. And I have been writing notes in my notebook on designing a cardigan that is based on a jean jacket style design. That's with cutting of a jean jacket as well as where uh, hemming is done and buttons normally appear. So I'm going to be using 
that style of jean jacket. Now I've got my notes here that I'll show you. <laughs> They're all kind of all over the place, but it's not a fixed in stone kind of design right now because I'm looking, I've got notes here saying, do I want cabling up here? Do I want some, what kind of stitches do I want? And I've got some uh, counts in numbers of stitches and broken down the design that way. Now this design layout doesn't have sleeves, but I will be putting sleeves on it. It's just for me to see where I'd like to make those uh, design kind of changes and the style of cabling I want to put on there. So I've chosen the yarn that I want to use and I began working on it. I'm working bottom up and it will be worked in a whole piece. So I'm doing the, the, the back and the two front panels together until I split for the arms. And I'm using the seed stitch here for the, the band that goes across the bottom, the waistband, and then it will go up along the side for the buttons. Uh, I'm using, I love this yarn so much. I have three balls of this and it's from Stitch Studio by Nicole. It's an AC Moore, which is no longer around, but that, that was their house brand or house collection. And it's so wonderfully soft. The colorway is called Butternut and it does have those flecks of, I don't know, nubs of different tweed in there. I absolutely love it. And it's a four weight yarn. 95% acrylic and 5% viscose. So I think maybe the flex of the viscose. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter set of needles and these are just the clover bamboo variety of needles and they're fixed. So yeah, little project that I'm working on. It will take a back seat right now because I was waiting on some review yarn that was being sent to me from Hobie and it has arrived. So I'm happy to say, I absolutely love this yarn that I'm reviewing. I'm going to spend uh, most of February working up these items. I have finished two items already and I am starting my third one. So I'm not sure when the video is gonna come out, but I'm going to do a review process with Hobie and find out whether they give me the green light to post it. And then I'll have, I'm happy to show you the, the items that I may, have made with them and the items that I'm making with them. So there are a few things, wheels are turning and things are moving forward on that one as well. So I think that catches you up with all of the yarning goodness. But for those of you who have been with me for a while, you know I like to catch you up on what I've been going on with here in the New To Me community me and my husband Chad have moved into. I got a message, I'll just close that. And that's what's coming up next. So if you were just around for the Yarny content, I just want to say thank you for joining and I will see you in the next video. But if you want to stick around, please do. Looking down at the list of things that I've been up to here in this small community with my husband, Chad, over the last two weeks, it's quite a different list to what I'm usually, uh, I guess, talking about with you. And I have to say, there are no hikes in this video, so I'm super sorry. But we've been doing a lot more in the way of meeting new people. And we've had two dinner invitations. And the families that we met were so warm, welcoming, and the food was so delicious. The conversation was great. So we're expanding out of our insular kind of nucleus, and we're meeting some of the members in the community. So. I want to just say if anyone who's watching who invited us to that dinner, a big hello and thank you so much because this channel did come up in conversation, but I don't know whether or not that they will be watching. Uh, so yeah, it, it's all to do with Chad's circuit of networking with being a teacher. So one of the families is a co-worker and the other invitation we got was a member in the teacher network from Vancouver who moved over to this area about a year before we did. So it's now five months that we've been in this new community and it's high time that we met some of the members here in the community. So I am loving it. I also have paid my membership to join the Potters Club, 
where I can go down every Wednesday and use the facility at a university here or college, I should say, and the technical aspect of all of the things that are there, top notch, some things I don't even know too much about, like different firings of um, a pot, a potter has different ways of firing their, their makes. So, uh, there is wood fire, gas fire, and electric fire. And I'm only versed in the electric version of like firing your work. So, <laughs> uh, lots of learning to be done there. And I'm, I'm, I'm really eager to do it. I did the orientation and it was an amazing facility. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned a couple updates back, or maybe it was the last update, I mentioned about um, talking about new developments, new business propositions, all that sort of thing in a phone meeting that I had. And it's an ongoing development. We haven't come to any conclusions or resolutions yet. So I'll keep you informed of what happens with that one as it unfolds and manifests. Um, so yeah, I have here a couple of movies as well that we've been watching because I've been sitting at home working on the Hobie projects and focusing on getting that done because I do want to do a great job for this yarn that they sent me as well. It's not an affiliation or anything, it's just that they've sponsored the yarn. Uh, so I want to give you my honest opinion about the yarn, but I also want to make some really beautiful things out of the yarn that uh, they had given me. So I'm working diligently on that. Uh, so watching television as I'm working and we've started, I think we might have actually finished the o new Ozark series. I don't know what season it's on, maybe uh, five, the fifth season. But if anyone else has been watching it, I don't want to do any spoilers because it is as intense as all the other seasons. A little violent. Uh, if you've not seen Ozark before, it stars Laura Linney and it stars Jason Bateman. Sorry about that. I had to stop the camera. There was a little bit of a coughing fit that I had. All the fiber that, that's been rustling around or unsettled uh, throughout the, the air. I think I've choked on one of them. <laughs> so, yeah, going back to the Ozark or Ozark is uh, a series that is on Netflix. And if you are into the gangster style type movies where you are on the edge of your seat when people are in danger for their lives uh, and have to do unspeakable acts of inhumane or crazy things to survive a situation, then perhaps maybe Ozark is for you. Uh, I also have here some movies which have been in my book for a while and I've been wanting to talk about them, but I've had such long-winded episodes that I've always cut them back. But I have some walking movies, which technically is uh, more character-driven. There's, uh, there's not much fast-paced action in these movies, but I really enjoyed them. So you could call them dramas as well. Uh, I have uh, one called Peanut Butter Falcon, and it's an adorable movie about a character who has been placed in the wrong situation in his, uh, in his life. Apparently, I think it's revealed in the movie that he's been left to fend for himself and he's uh, not a, he's not an independent person. So they need to kind of facilitate him in a way where they can house him. And the place that they put him is <laughs> somewhere where he's not meant to really be. So he escapes and it's his adventure as he goes through all these wonderful journeys with a sidekick or he meets up with a friend and the friend is uh, Shayla Booth. He's the actor, and I absolutely love the character that he plays, and it's all to do with wrestling as well. So if you're into the world of wrestling, that's kind of like a little bit of a side highlight. Uh, the last one here is Honey Boy, and this is, I believe, loosely based on Shayla Booth's life story about a child actor and how he relates with his family. So Shayla Booth is the character who appears or is the father within the storyline and I believe he might have directed some of it and these are both also on 
uh, Netflix. So if you're looking for some slower paced movies that have more character driven storyline, then those are the two that I would recommend. And with that, that catches you up on everything as a huge cloud just blocks the sun and it makes it feel like it's three hours later in the day than it really is. So I want to just wish you the, a well week and also happy crafting. Hopefully you learn something new and that excites you as well, or maybe you try some new yarn that you want to tell me about. So please leave me a comment on any of the material that I've presented today. And if you want to ask me any questions, you can do that as well. I love reading all of your comments, so keep them coming. And I will catch you up in the next video. Looking forward to it. It might be that Hobie review. You never know. Uh, so I got a lot more work to do, so we'll see. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.